portion of your photos. Just wanting to know what's your plans for the next few months and years? What, what are you going to do with your photography? You got any exhibitions coming up or anything like that? Oh, to tell you the truth, Joe, I just want to lie in a hammock in the tropics. <laughs> you want to get out. Chill out. You want to get, get out. out. <laughs> I want to chill out, eat coconuts, live like a tribe. Yeah. Uh, but I can't do that now. Are you planning so. to go away? Oh, was it this year or next year? Would you want to go? Oh, this this year, next year. Next year, uh, yeah. It's now yeah. now next year. Depending on the situation, I've got a friend who's invited me. I only met him in a plane once. Uh, mm-hmm. He was coming back to India from the states. Uh, I think his son was studying in the states, and he invited me to uh, Rajasthan. Wonderful place. He made a lot of movies there, uh, yeah. and he's invited me to where he lives, Jaipur. And, and I'll what? pick up movies? the offer. Is he a Bollywood uh, actor or something? No, 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 no. <laughs> Nothing like that, but he invited me for his son's wedding, and yeah. I couldn't I couldn't attend. It was a few years back, so I'll go I'll go this time. You've done a lot of we, we haven't even we're going to have to have a part two as well because you haven't even done um, shown us your international photos. Yeah, we can do that. I don't have any plans here. I still work. Everybody has to work. Uh, <laughs> Got to work. Can't make, make your, any money from, your hobby. from photographs and. and um, that's so, the reality. I'm, I'm working less now mm-hmm. and I'm winding down at work. I like to work three days a week and have mm-hmm. four days a week. Yeah. Do my own thing, which is do my own thing, which is really nothing. Uh, <laughs> I, I've just moved to uh, Paran, uh, inner mm-hmm. city suburb, small little studio, like a box, but uh, yeah. I, I get to go out to the beach quite a bit, St. Kilda, Albert Park, and that's where I do the outdoor gym. Chill out and unwind. Uh, the mind has to be relaxed. And then you can think about what do you want to do? I still carry my camera everywhere I go. And sometimes I take pictures of ducks and swans. It's it's still nice to photograph something instead of photographing nothing at all. Some photographers are really strict with the genre, uh, precious. I'm a street photographer. That's all I shoot. I just photograph anything I see. If it interests yeah. me, if it tickles me, if it makes me laugh a little bit, I photograph a, a cat, for example, stealing food. And I've got a few of those photographed in Indonesia. The street, lots of cats running around and jumping on tables. And mm-hmm. the moment you turn away, anything that's entertaining, anything is of interest. And if it happens to be a street shot and I'll, that I need to exhibit or print, then I'll choose from yeah. the selection of pictures and anything feels like a street photograph, then I'll, I'll use that. So I'm not strict. I don't even call myself a street photographer. So let me correct you there when you introduce me as street photographer. Uh, I just photograph. Uh, I, 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 I find it's my meditation, I think. Yeah. I think uh, and if it happens to be a street, so I don't go out thinking I'm a street photographer. I'm a champion street photographer. I'm going to take street photographs. They're going to be brilliant. They're going to win awards. And no, nothing like yeah, that nah. at all. I'm quite <laughs> relaxed. Uh, sometimes yeah. I, for a whole week, I, I just carry the camera. I don't even take a single photograph. Yeah. And it's not photographer's block or writer's block or anything yeah. like that. It's just uh, the process that you've got. Accept that some days you don't take pictures. Some days nothing interests you. Something else interests you. And it's not. A photograph. It might be your favorite meal or yeah, a good strong coffee exactly. uh, or some conversation in the street. And I sometimes have this bad habit of uh, when I'm overseas, I think that because my time is limited, that I have to start taking pictures. Yeah, uh, got I've to- got to take really good pictures because time is limited. But now I don't do that. I'll spend a few days just looking at people. It's whatever you're then, you Yeah. Uh, the, the process gets. If it happens, it happens. And yeah. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So just let it allow. Uh, I mean, it shouldn't be pressured. Yeah. And uh, you got to accept that people are not there to perform for you. You don't expect people to be at the right spot at the right time for you to take a brilliant shot, win an award. It's not yeah. going to happen like that. So I, I don't expect or think of uh, people as uh, performers, like actors. It, it, they're not. So if something happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not going to ask them, hey, can you stand there again? Miss the opportunity. You, you, you've buggered it and, and it's gone. So exactly. something else might happen. So Because I'm not yeah. paying them. If you, yeah. if you want someone to perform, then you pay. So how do people, if, if they wanted to see your photographs and that, how, how do they contact you or know what's happening? Oh, no, I've been meaning to... I've been meaning to set up a website and all that. But you've got a Facebook page, yeah? Yeah, the Facebook page, a Facebook, my Facebook timeline. Instagram. Is you can, you can send Instagram. me a message. So I'll send a message. Link. So I'll leave, I'll leave the link below for anyone who wants yeah, to yeah. Uh, follow him on Instagram and Facebook yeah. page. And you can see other photos as well that he's posted up. 
yeah. um, and contact you that way. Yeah, yeah, that's the best way. I think it's very casual. You just send me a message and I'll name you the price. And that's it. It's all fair and framed, whatever. You can meet the city for a coffee and I can bring yeah. the picture along. And if you don't pay for it, I'll just smash it. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you still do um, pets, like photos for um, people's pets and stuff? Or I was I was getting into it. It's quite because it's uh, less pressure, I think. I, I yeah, do but ask you. You reckon like, pets? Jeez. Uh, the, the, doc, the docs. Show, the, the Melbourne good. Dog Show that they have it every year. I don't know what happens because of lockdown, maybe. And yeah, yeah. The Dog Show would have been. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the Dog Lovers uh, Show. Yeah. I think it's uh, a lot of people mistook it that they, they, they could actually bring their own dogs to the show, but it's actually it's not for that. It's for all those people in the business mm-hmm. of uh, caring for dogs. Oh, so right. A dog grooming business. Mm-hmm. would set up stall there and they got to pay a lot of money there yeah. as well to, to advertise the business right a dog grooming uh, a dog a pet photographer being yeah. inside as well they would set up there they would have a few samples for the beautiful portraits of dogs yeah slobbering dogs and all that stuff <laughs> make it into some kind of art form uh, a dog spinning its head and all that slobber is going around in all directions and in slow mode. Happen, uh, <laughs> some kind of a still shot but with yeah. all that so they would advertise themselves there so it's not for the public to just bring the dogs oh um, right okay and, and yeah. i would uh position myself outside the building because you've got to pay quite a lot of money to go in yeah. and yeah. i don't mind paying if the lighting is good yeah so the lighting there in in the building itself is very dull light so you mm. can't take dogs are fidgeting all around yeah, yeah. You, you can't get you can't freeze motion it's all blurry and all that mm. so i'd wait outside the gardens and mm. the people inside would bring the dogs out to do a poo you know they have to poo somewhere yeah, uh, yeah. so so they would bring the dogs outside and then i'll ask her say that's a very handsome looking dog uh, they'll be proud and and it's just, can I take a picture too? You know, like of uh, this dog. Oh, so, I can Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll create something. Create. Kind of, I've never seen a dog that color. You know. Uh, <laughs> although you've seen the dog that color, I've never seen. Geez, I've never seen a dog with coat so smooth. You know. <laughs> how, what do you? How do you? How do you groom such a dog? How do you come yeah. up with such a, a specimen? So, yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. So oh. you would you then you'd photograph and I've taken quite a few pictures though. And you've done not in the act of pooping, you know, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but after you've done this. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, no, there's been so, a few good um dog um pictures that you've taken, pet pet owners and uh, stuff so, like that. But they've got a character in themselves. But I uh, it's, it's, it's good gig. fun. And it takes your your mind away from strict rules and and you have fun. If you get a shot, you get a shot. If you Mm. don't, you don't. And photography is about, for me at least, it's it's a fun thing. It's it's meditation. It calms me. You have a laugh and and you you look back and sometimes you've missed a shot. You think you've missed a shot. And, well, actually, if you've not missed a shot and you check back on your laptop and you have a blog, I've not missed this. I've got the shot. Yeah. Uh, so, and it's really rewarding when when that happens. Uh, it's yeah. like a bonus. It's something you didn't expect, and you got it. And even now, when I take a picture, I think it's rubbish. And then years later, I think, hey, that says something, doesn't it? So years later, it's all in the experience, uh, growth, uh, how your mindset is, evolves. Uh, in a few years, you think that something is rubbish now, is not so rubbishy later on, mm. or something that's brilliant now, is rubbish later on. Like yeah. I look back at some of the pictures that I've exhibited. And say, Did I really do put up that rubbish? <laughs> you know, jeez. I'll look more carefully this time. I'll be more circumspect. I'll be more, you know, like careful with uh, what I put up because uh, mud sticks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? But people grow <laughs> from, you know, people. And and I don't. I didn't mind your early work. You know, with the seniors and stuff. I know you did a lot of photoshopping. You know, the ones with the the fish. That was stuff. just a. F- that was just a fun but I loved thing. it because you captured yeah. the fun. Yeah. I don't know. I, I liked it. But see, I'm not I'm not a serious photographer or anything. I'm just a person who just enjoys a you know a photo that speaks to I, me. I don't even think that I'm serious uh, photographer. Mm. I'm not serious. The moment I think if I get serious, I fear that I get serious and I'll kill myself. Uh <laughs> in in the photographic sense. I yeah, think yeah, I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill myself. That's a death of me as a photographer no, no, I, I'll no. go into something else maybe I'll go to pottery or something you know 
you know, or, or quilt making or something. You know? Quilt making, oh my gosh, yeah, no, nah, yeah, something nah, like that. So, so the moment it. if I get serious, uh, yeah. uh, too serious about it, like uh, it's got to be fun, and like quilt making, it's got to be a fun process. Yeah, you it don't want to have a deadline. You don't want putting wanna... bits of ripped pieces of cloth and fabric together to make it into an art form, and I, I yeah. suppose that's fun. It's a lot it should of be um, fun work. It's like you know when. Um, I used to enjoy cycling until mm. I joined a marathon thing and I hated it because you had to do so yeah. many kilometres every weekend mm-hmm. to get your fitness. For me, I just thought, no, that's yeah. too hard. I'd, I stopped enjoying riding a bicycle mm. out of leisure. It's all about, you know, endurance and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, you know, definitely anything mm-hmm. that becomes a job or a chore, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I just lose interest really fast. So. So, so, like I was saying, like the moment the uh, the quilt maker gets so serious in quilt making, you might end up with a chessboard. Yeah, yes. <laughs> no beauty because everything's got to be in order. So yeah, yeah. you might all this design yeah. a chessboard, you know, like blacks and whites and and, and browns and whites or whatever. So yeah, yeah. Uh, no, so no, so no, uh, no. photography, uh, it 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 is like that. The, the, the whole writing process as well. The danger is that you can attend too many workshops. Workshops work for a certain period of time. So a lot of people attend photography, street photography workshops. And the trouble with those things is that you got to wean yourself out of it. At some stage, you got to say, that's enough. I'm going to take pictures. I'm going to be myself. Because workshops can do that because the convener normally would say, uh, this is how you take it. There's a rule of thirds. There's this. Uh, you want to get close to your subjects. The closer, the better. How close you want to get? You know, you get in, you're gonna get a no sprint on your lens. You know, if you get too close, so uh, you gotta use this lens, uh, the one lens, the 35 mm in full frame and uh, 35 mm format. Uh, this is the lens. That, this is the best lens. You can use a 200 mm zoom to get a straight picture. It's just gonna give you a different look. So you can't be too precious about uh rules and, and because it it no. can it can uh, destroy you as uh, your creativity yeah it yeah absolutely i mean it's, it's good for um knowing a guideline and a guideline maybe know, a few lines you know and, bits and, and technical stuff but yeah. after that it's just should come from you know um your gut how you think you want to play with your tools and stuff like that you know yeah, um, have fun with it and then you just take pictures and, and just mm. have fun with it uh that guy who I met, that young student, I think with the roller flex, the mid format film camera. Yeah, yeah. He says he's, but he says he's got to be more careful. Each shot he takes is $3. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how much is that? Three <laughs> bucks a shot. Yeah, if he takes a, he, so he has to be really careful. He's got to read the scene and he's, he, I think he's got to be quite precious with how he takes his shots because each yeah. frame he takes in that mid format film camera. Uh, is three dollars so uh, okay. uh, that does not include the printing you know so if he's going to print that's it large negative, is, it? is it just that's the negative just, uh, that's the process the negative and, uh, okay. uh he has to take it to a shop because it doesn't do it, but so who does that now is. is there any place uh, to- there are a few people who still do it michaels is doing it but michaels don't do it because they, they've closed shop yeah yeah they, they're still operating as online because they've they, they've oh, they've right. got to finish their stock they've got like six million dollars but- worth of stock so you're gonna uh, have to send <clears throat> your film somewhere yeah. post it um, there are a few people that do it there some like i said is this this asian students this asian mob they're really passionate and they've actually opened a shop called film never die Right, and they sell film cameras, and they do the processing there. Uh, they are based in, in uh, they're based in Docklands, I think. Oh, Docklands. They were based in Burke Street in the city, but they've yep. moved to uh, Docklands side, so they got a shop yep. there. Yeah, okay. so a lot of the uh, the film people go there and process the film, but they're very few and far between. I suppose they have them in suburb suburb somewhere. Fitzroy. I don't know. It used to be uh, in every corner. Remember the Fuji uh, film? They would, they Kodak would, they film would still. Um, uh, but they're expensive now because they are only a few niche. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's not dying. Yeah. You see, because the students have come back in a big way. Yeah. They love. I did ask him why. Why film? He says he just loves the organic process. Yeah. He loves the uh, not knowing what is taken. Yeah. It's so like people be careful. who. It's like those who love the Super 8s. You know, you've got that whole yeah. club that loves the Super 8 yeah. camera. I go, yeah. Yeah. you can get a Super 8 on your digital, you know, that vintage thing. But they say, oh, 
Yeah. And and I'm, I remember that, I mean, the cameras were cheap, but the film is a fortune, mm. like. Yeah. yeah. And um, I thought, oh, geez. And, and, you know, and you could only get a small amount of film each time. And I thought, mm. why don't you just use the computer and get that, you know, just get the digital vintage look in it. But you again, can, you can fun. do it, but I guess it's not the final result. Yeah. For, for these students, uh, these people, in, in, in these young uh, dudes, uh, they like the whole process, the whole Gotta journey. Or something, or is that just a and it's also a fashion statement because yeah. everybody looks at you. If you're holding a roll of flax, yeah. I'm holding my Olympus digital camera, nobody's going to look at it. You know, yeah. nobody's going to. But if you hold a roll of flax, uh, yeah. uh, uh, a, a hazy Hazelblatt, one of those mid formats, you know, a Leica even, mm. a film camera, everybody's going to look at it. Everybody's going to look at it. Jeez. Can I look at it? Fascinating. So like a like a chick magnet. <laughs> These boys. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it is. I met a young young guy in a tram. Uh he's just in his twenties. I, I hooked up with him on Instagram and he's really passionate. And he's with his girlfriend and he was showing her how to take and they were both holding film cameras. He's got an old contacts, contacts camera, heavy, yeah. heavy beast of a camera, small little compact. Mm. It was Built like a tank, and he was mm. uh, really proud of it. He was taking pictures with it, and his uh, girlfriend had a film camera. He's giving her some tips of uh, depth of field and stuff like that, focal length, and all those things. And I had a conversation with him, and I, what I admired about him was his passion. He's yeah. quite a creative guy. He was doing some videos and stuff like that, but he just like he was twenty years old. I met a guy yeah. in a tram with a video, old video camera, yeah. and he had cassette, a cassette player. Wow. We had a cassette player. This is only a few years back, and cassettes have all died. They've been replaced yeah. by CDs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, God knows. Uh, vinyl has come back big time. Yes, there's a record shop up vinyl, the road. Vinyl has come vinyl. back. Yeah. Uh, people just like the big package with the whole book, the sleeves, and <laughs> the smell of that 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 wax paper inside. You slide out the whole <laughs> vinyl, and, and you have to polish it before you play. Yeah. Put a needle on it, and you can decide yeah. what song you want to play. Pink Floyd's, uh, yeah, comfortably numb, or, or something, or some jazz, uh, yeah, uh, Miles Davis, and kind of blue, fantastic <laughs> stuff. That organic, cool, that yeah. analog, that analog yeah. uh, sound they, they like. And same, you were, you, were, you used to complain <laughs> about that. You used to, you you were convinced that the vinyl had a better sound than than the um, CD. Oh, it, it does in many ways is because uh, what they got. In fact, I had this conversation with someone who's an audiophile. Yeah. And audio, audio files are very yeah, precious yeah. about their sound. And precious. They, they, you've got this listening room that you can't stand. You've got to sit in a certain position and you can't cross <laughs> your legs and all that because <clears throat> it messes the acoustics. And 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 and, and this guy was saying, actually, the, the, when they produce CDs, uh, they decided that some of the frequencies that you can't hear, the human yeah. he ear can't hear, mm -hmm. why just get rid of that? Yeah. So they got rid of the things that you can't hear. The yeah, highest yeah. and the lowest, yeah. they got rid of that. There's yeah. no point having all that. Uh, so when you listen to CDs, it's... Uh, Flat. I think the people who listen to vinyls, uh, no, I, I, mean, I, I can't tell. I listen to the CDs, it sounds great. You've got nice bass, you've got good speakers, good amp, nice, warm, and these days you are... You get all this analog tapes from the original tapes being digitally remastered anyway. Yeah. So yeah. you get an old CD from the 60s and, yeah, yeah. and uh, 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 from tape, in fact. Yeah, yeah tape. Not even vinyl. Yeah. And they do a digital remaster. They clean yeah. up all the sounds and great. But apparently there's some, this, this audio file that said to me, uh, he's a human being, by the way. <laughs> he's a person, yeah. not a robot. And, and he said that... Uh, you do not just hear music, you feel it. You well, feel music. Well, I, I, I do agree with that because, you know, that I, I believe in frequencies in general. And then yeah. people yeah. used to complain that, you know, people like yeah. Spotify and that there's oh. a certain frequency that's sort of almost a controlling thing. I mean, if you want to yeah. go down that rabbit hole, but... Um, mm. But I reckon even the frequencies we can't hear, I think it's important because our body accepts it, right? We, you feel it. You, you feel, feel it, it, right? And it, uh, it, it does do things to your senses, even if you can't mm -hmm. hear it. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely the frequency is important. But 
but tapes do deteriorate. Like I, I found a shoebox full of my mm-hmm. tapes, you know, from, um, you know, the Heat, 90s. humidity. Yeah, all of that. <coughs> it, it wasn't even CDs. Tapes. I've just chucked them in the shoebox yeah. and I don't know what, you know. Um, humidity, heat. Uh, yeah. Uh, CDs also deteriorate. My, my yeah, brother, my brother yeah. lives in Singapore because of the humidity. A lot yeah. of the CDs were yeah. uh, not playable anymore. So yeah. you got damaged by, by fungal growth, especially <laughs> fungal. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. fungus, fungal growth is one, really one fungal number. growth on a CD. On a CD, like your camera. Your, your camera, your biggest problem with camera lenses is fungus. Really? Uh, uh, fungus grows on it and it destroys the, uh, the, the optics. Right, and it's you got to get a real professional to clean it up. Uh, this happens when you keep your lenses in the dark, yeah, in humid environments. So it doesn't happen here in Australia, well, except like for tonight down in Melbourne. Yeah, except uh, for tonight, it, but yeah, it would happen like in Singapore, Malaysia, or in Cairns, places yeah. like that that yeah. have a dry a dry box uh, dehumidifier. Yeah, uh, box like like it looks like a fridge, and you put your lenses there to wow. to dry them up. Uh, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah you, need, you need that because in the tropics, that's what happens. And, and if you don't use lenses quite a while in the dark, the fungal growth, uh, the fungus would thrive in it and it destroys the optics. Uh, it messes the whole thing up and you can't clean it. Uh, so the marks are there and it destroys the pictures and you can't take good pictures or uh, crisp. So you need to look after your lenses. Uh, wow. Uh, like Next use them. Why. Because UV light would destroy the, the, the fungus, would kill off, yeah. uh, uh, sure. would stop it from growing in the first place. That's what yeah. uh, the theory is. At least yeah. you want to dry out the lenses. So a lot of this, uh, people use dry boxes yeah. or some, some silica gel or something like that, put in the boxes and replace them every now and then just to keep them dry. Uh, some people use the cheap ways, use rice. Yeah, well, that's what they say when you drop your phone in water and mm-hmm. put rice, put it in the bag of rice. Mm-hmm. But yeah, interesting. I wonder if other, you know, technology. I mean, I knew other technology gets affected during humidity and instruments as well, musical instruments. But lenses, I never thought of that getting fungus. <laughs> but, uh, a lot uh, of things you don't know. Like uh, I learned uh, that boiling water boils at a lower temperature and high altitudes. Yes, and, uh, when you cook rice, and, uh, it makes a difference. I lo- and I was wondering why I was uh, four, almost 5,000 meters up that mountain, Kilimanjaro, all those years ago. Yep. Why the, the guide and the cook were, were spending such a long time boiling my, my broth, my soup. Yep. I was starving. I said, please hurry up. It's already <laughs> boiling. It's cooked. Uh, but no, they had to boil it. Because it's a lower temperature, you have to yeah. boil it for a lot longer to kill the, the, the bacteria. Right. Uh, whatever whatever parasites were in it, so they had to kill yeah. it off. And so you got to yeah. boil it for a longer duration. Uh, it's uh, like, um, <clears throat> yeah, when I was in um, Cusco and um, I remember, you know, I was, I was staying at my friend's house and I said, oh, I'll do the rice, I'll, I'll cook the rice for mm-hmm. you. And she's, Joe, it's different. No, no, no. It's a, oh, what, mm-hmm. the grain of rice? Yeah, I'll just use that mm-hmm. finger method, you know. Yep, no, yeah, yeah. And I completely stuffed up the rice because, again, mm-hmm. it's different altitude. And I, she mm-hmm. kept on telling me, but I didn't believe her. Like, ah, that's full mm-hmm. of shit. But I, I never realised that, yeah, mm-hmm. um, the whole boiling and everything at a certain um, at altitude is completely different. So mm-hmm. I learned that lesson. But, um, yeah. Anyway, we've got so to... that, that would kill off. Interesting things you learn. So, so in journey as a photographer, you learn things as you move along. Always be the student. I'm always a student, never the expert. Yeah. So, so you keep learning, you absorb things. Children can tell you how uh, to photograph as well. There was a brilliant, I think there was a photographer back in the day. So she bought all these little cheap, compact, disposable cameras yeah, yeah. and you, you, you can google this and find the uh she went to the slums of i don't know where it was delhi or kolkata or something and she got some street kids and gave them all the camera shoot what do you like and they came back and she processed the pictures and found a brilliant photographer and one of his uh, kids wow and, yep. and he was a very difficult child he had problems with interacting and, and he was always yeah. angry yeah, uh, but the pictures he took were absolutely brilliant, and he yeah. uh, eventually was sent to uh, the Netherlands, Holland, and he oh, had wow. an exhibition in Amsterdam. He was wow. brilliant. He was brilliant. He, he was just a street kid, 
Oh, uh, really? Like an, like an orphan. And he uh, photographed things that you wouldn't imagine. He was quite creative as well. What he saw, because he knew the streets. He was born there. He knew. Like, How if I was... went there, I wouldn't. He was about eight or nine years old. And, oh, wow. Uh, he, he was quite difficult. One of the more difficult children that she had to deal with. She was always throwing a tantrum. He was angry, I think. Uh, uh, but when he, when he took pictures, he was as calm and collected. Mm. Okay. He, he, he's just zoned out into a different person altogether. Yeah. And, and, and she saw something in him and then uh, and he ended up in having this big exhibition, all these pictures. Wow. Uh, I hope she, um, the money they've got hopefully went back to him for his future as well. Oh, she was all for him, in fact. Yeah, okay. uh, she wasn't for herself because she, yeah. she wasn't... Uh, uh, I suppose a great photo- photographer herself, but she mm. thought it would be fun to see what Kids the would children see. would see. Mm. She was more interested in what they saw, not in what she was yeah, going to yeah. see. I, I guess she knows that what she saw, yeah, but she yeah. wanted to see uh, yeah. what they saw through their yeah. Uh, yeah. eyes because they lived in the streets, so they would mm-hmm. see uh, something else. Uh, so because I've not lived in the, the streets, I, yeah. I can go to Manila, and I've been mm-hmm. there a few times, and I don't know mm-hmm. uh, what it. You go there for a month or two, and you say you've lived there. No, that's not true. So that's not enough. So was it from from India or Manila? <coughs> India, India, India. Okay, yeah, yeah, India, India. Yeah, no, so well, you can you can check it. I I tried googling it, and I I found him actually, but I've lost yeah. the uh, link. I'll send you the link. And yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll um, put it in the. You'll, um, you'll see it, um, and he was uh, he was uh, quite stunning one. the way the way he was seeing things uh, mm. through those eyes of a young person that was quite wise, yeah. in fact. Yeah, uh, because he was experienced uh, in that life. Huh? He lives it. Uh, yeah, he's in it. Yeah, lives yeah. it. Uh, so, so wow. Yes, wow. Uh, amazing. So you could learn from what uh, a much younger person would see because they they have got no filters. they've not they got no uh, filters. Uh, learn things and have all mm. these uh, rules and, and like yeah. you say filters. Yeah, what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do, and stuff yeah. like that. So quite spontaneous, and uh, mm. and and they would. Uh, so I'd like to imagine that I'll never grow up in many ways <laughs> as as a photographer. I would remain with those eyes. Yeah, uh, and you got to have a lot of heart as well. Yeah, you have to. Uh, uh, you've got to understand where people are coming from. And, mm-hmm. and at least sit down and listen, do a lot of listening and not talking over people when you listen to stories because the listening part is very important. You would learn a lot. No matter how wrong you feel they, they are, it's still valid. Tough call, but yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, In it's karma not, times, not yes, not uh, 100%, you know. That's, um, that's real listening because I had this conversation with a friend and he's uh, Mr. Knowledgeable. He reads a lot. He reads a lot of books, politics and stuff like that. And, and I told him the uh, thing about listening is to uh, uh, when, when someone is speaking and you, if while that person is speaking, you're already forming a counter argument in your head, you're not listening. Yep. Uh, because you're already forming a counter argument. <laughs> uh, and that's what we all do. Yep. I do it all the time. So the art of listening is to absorb and validate everything that the person is mm. saying, no matter how wrong you feel it is. And you shouldn't even feel it's wrong. You should just absorb it. That's all valid. That's Take hard. it all in. And it's that's easy. one of the very hard. It's not easy. Very hard. <laughs> one of the hardest things to do. And I would sit down and listen. And by doing that, in fact, it's quite, mm. it really opens your eyes mm. to see another point of view. Hey, I didn't think about it. And that's why I like stepping back when when uh, when when my pictures on exhibit like the, the recent one I would step back and just listen, and I would not argue with them. I don't I don't correct them. I don't. No, that's what it actually is. No, no, I don't bother to say it. This is what you feel, and that's valid. Yeah. That's valid. Uh, if you don't like it, you don't like it. If you think it's rubbish, uh, I it's would tell them why. Uh, why do I, I would ask them why do you, why do you think it's rubbish? Uh, but not in a defensive way. Yeah. I would just ask them why do you think it's rubbish, and and they say I don't know. I just think it's rubbish. But I, I don't know. But just 
is it good rubbish? Is it bad rubbish? You know, I would just try to get something out of. Uh, That's pretty tough skin of you, Ben. Really, because I, I'd, uh, I'd be like uh, hiding under a rock if people were looking at my work. I mean, you know, I'd be like, because you know, especially if you like, like you did mention that you didn't, um, you don't get attached too much. No, no. Yeah. And yeah. all responses, in fact, if you uh, provoke a response, is a mm. good response. It's yeah. something good, even if it's a, a one that you don't agree with, rather than having a silent crowd. Imagine if you read out your poem yeah. and everyone is just silent and nobody responds. I would rather have people chucking tomatoes and, and yeah. Yeah. cans of baked beans you know like, uh, <laughs> I'd go tomatoes before the baked beans you know so yeah. so I would rather have that that is a response yeah true true uh, I was once in a writer's class and, and uh, somebody wrote something which was really uh, uh, chauvinistic it was uh, mm. misogynistic and, and mm. it was just rotten it was belittling women and stuff like that yeah. But that was the point of view. He was writing a fictional character who thought like that. Yeah. And everyone just attacked him. All this, uh, uh, you know, women's rights movements. Yeah. They attacked him. And, and he was so upset. And the teacher actually says, calm down. It is a response. You've mm -hmm. all responded to it. And that's good. The writing mm -hmm. has worked. It's a response. You've all responded to it. You didn't agree with it. But that's how artists sometimes not pleasing it doesn't have to please you you don't walk out of a gallery with a smile all the time you might some things might offend you depending on your upbringing and your values yeah. and stuff like that and and you might get offended we can get offended wherever whenever everything if i want to be offended i can be offended you know, like, uh, <laughs> it doesn't uh, take much to be offended nowadays no, no you <laughs> can be offended uh your music is rubbish and, yeah no no nah, nah, like um speaking of responses from a gallery i, I remember getting out of guggenheim <laughs> And mm. I had the worst headache because, mm. and I felt really dumb because I thought mm. this modern art stuff, they're, they're doing my head in. They're so, you know, you, you assume, oh, they're so brilliant and they're so mm -hmm. gifted. And then, but you just don't get their artwork. And you, it's like the emperor's new clothes. You're just too afraid to say mm. it's crap. And, but I didn't want to sound ignorant, you know, mm. that I'm not educated enough. But, yeah, so I ended up, because I was so conflicted about the artwork, I, woke, I walked out with a massive headache because mm -hmm. of, I know what I, I knew what it, for me it was and I just didn't like it, but I, I felt like I had to like it because it was Guggenheim, mm -hmm. right? So um, anyway, but that was just, a, that was just another, um, what do you call it, reaction to artwork, you know, where you, people you can be like it, you know? You can be a real connoisseur and talk a whole 50 pages about a, a wine, mm. you know. So I don't have that knowledge in wine, but I would still listen. I don't have a passion in wine, but I would still mm. listen to people talking yeah. and just listen. It may sound like nonsense and, uh, you know, like a, but it's still nice to listen yeah. uh, to people talking. I'll tell you this uh, about the art, and I think why... This happens sometimes. Uh, teachers uh, can do wrong sometimes by not listening because they are knowledgeable and they think that they've got to be didactic, uh, just teach, part their knowledge, and you you listen. Asia, Singapore, it's very much like that. Those years before, I think it's much better now that people are being taught to uh, think critically. Right. I did witness something in a gallery once uh, in the National Gallery of Singapore. My brother brought me there and I noticed some year 12 equivalent uh, students, uh, smart with spectacles, with long white pants and shirts and ties. They were in their last years of maybe sixth form before they would go into uni, yeah. university. So the teacher was there and asking them, there were five of them, one, uh, I think, girl and uh, two girls and three boys or something like that, as I remember. And the teacher asked them to describe this particular piece of art, what it meant. And each uh, student took their turn and in halting words and like as if they feared something, they would say something wrong. They, they said what it meant, you know, like that. And after all of them took their turns and the teacher said, no, actually, this is what it actually means. Mm. And uh, geez, I said, I always wanted to take the picture on the wall and just smash it in the head you know? mm. why bother asking them for the opinions when at the end of it you're going to devalue them uh, invalidate all they've said by saying what it actually means that's a piece of art you can read it any way you want to based on your experience you know they were 
spending a lot of time nervously trying to get the words out to describe the painting. And none of them were wrong. None of them were wrong because I was listening. So, so why would you do that? Just killed off their dreams. It's nasty. When I saw it, I got angry. Can't help myself but to get angry because I was enjoying listening to them. Yeah. Uh, I may have felt that maybe some of them were saying, not describing things right or something, but there's no right or wrong because I didn't want to judge them. Uh, who, who am I anyway? I'm not an artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? like and, I could and, understand and, if the teacher would be talking about the artists themselves the, mm -hmm. and what they've read, why the artists yes, yes, that yes. way and the, maybe the models in it. Like I remember one time uh, it was this, oh, God, you know, the, you know, they would point out, oh, you know, if anything, oh, what do you see in this corner? Do you think mm -hmm. it's the same artist or do you think it's mm -hmm. their apprentice or yeah, what do you yeah, that, that's, their brushwork? You know, stuff like that. You know, that's a good mm -hmm. teacher. But when yeah. they start saying, no, you're wrong, it's about this and that, it's got nothing about uh, that. And that's what she said because she could have told them the story behind the image. Yeah, she could have just said the story. Uh, yeah, what the artist then... is going through, and and this is what the artist came up with. Yeah, what do you uh, think, or what do you think the artist process, is going uh, through? Yeah, and, yeah. and ask them to critically think what could have mm. been, what could the artist have been uh, going through? Hunger, poverty, where the artist lived, for example. What was the artist painting for, and and all this motivations and stuff like that. You can yeah. lose a lot of things, history and stuff like that. Uh, none of that is accurate it's to hundred percent because you were not mm. there. You're yeah. reading stories what other people said about this artist yeah. so nothing is uh, accurate you can just get some semblance of what the life of this artist was uh, uh, at that period of time yeah the history the landscape uh, yeah the wall that's why when you do any work photography painting sculpture and all that it's it really up to the, the final result is that you gotta let it go let all your preconceived ideas of what it is because just because you created it doesn't mean it's yours you just went through the process of capturing something, creating something, but it doesn't belong to you anymore. The only way to keep it yours, to make it yours, is to hide it, sleep beside it in your room. <laughs> then it's yours. Once yep. you put it out there, geez, it belongs to the world. Yeah, it's public. People can read it any way they want. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I like to say the death of the author. The, uh, when, when you write something creative, uh, when the ink uh, dries after the pen, it's no longer yours. Yeah. <laughs> it's no longer, it doesn't belong to you. It's on the page now, it belongs to whoever is going to read that. That requiem. Uh, <laughs> uh, that the story you're telling is no longer yours. Uh, don't, don't be too precious about it now. Wow. Uh, so, so a lot of uh, ideas, uh, concepts, when you think about it, you're all going to die, you know, the art is going to... Continue uh, on, you're so, immortal. So, so the, the art is not going to die with you. Yeah. Like the Egyptians do, they put all the artifacts in the, the tombs and yeah. only to be yeah. robbed by some grave robbers, you know, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I took this from the pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's it's interesting, but um, yeah, we got so deep. Anyway. Yeah, um, yeah, well, well, can I show some more pictures? <laughs> yeah. no, we're going we're gonna to have to make a, like a like a whole part two, three, four and five here. Yeah. But um, okay, well, thanks, Ben. Thank for you. my very Joe. first interview. Yes, yes, I hope that's interesting artists. enough. Creative <laughs> artists and going through this technology of Zoom, far out. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. I'll leave yes, a link yes. below and yeah. um, catch up with you yeah. then. Yes, yes, yes. Got to do one live, actual, actually sitting down in the, your lounge room and with the big bushland in the background and, <laughs> you know, doing an interview there. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, yeah, at the moment it's blurred because I'm in got, got all sorts of gym equipment behind me. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, I got to get those fairy lights and you know make mm -hmm. it pretty. <laughs> all right, hang on. Okay, then. Thanks. Thanks a lot. No worries. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Oh, geez. What time? How many hours? Have you been talking. Jeez. <laughs>